What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got another project. This is a 2002 Arctic Cat CR600 EFI Cross Country Edition. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and install this tunnel roll back on to the sled itself. Now the first thing that I have to do though is remove the bumper and then I have to flatten out a spot on the tunnel and then I'll be able to fully put the tunnel roll back onto the footboard. And then once I do that, I'll be able to go ahead and take some buck rivets, an air impact hammer and a bucking tool and fully reinstall this back onto the sled. So the reason I'm doing that is when I first got the sled, the bumper was must have been completely ripped off. In the process, the tunnel roll itself was damaged. So what I did is I had another chassis with the same type of tunnel roll. I went ahead and cut them both right at the bend and the tunnel roll and then I welded them back together and then I recontoured and shaped the tunnel roll to make it match and blend it. Just needs a little bit of paint on it after we install it. So that's what we're going to do next. Alright so as you can see we have a couple different spots that we need to hit with some of these solid rivets. Now these rivets are aluminum so they won't be too tough to install but there are a few spots on this brace right here that will add some depth. So I have a bag of 3 16ths by 3 8 inch with a universal head on it and then I have some 3 16 inch by half inch rivets that I'm going to use. So we'll go ahead and get the bumper removed first and then we'll flatten out the tunnel. We'll put the tunnel roll back into place and then we'll go ahead and start putting these rivets in and then get it back together. Okay, so we have some pretty basic tools here. I just have, I have an impact drill that's got a Phillips bit on the end. This is actually a sleeve from my truck. It's a trailer hitch sleeve. I'm gonna use that as a bucking tool. And then like I said, I have some aluminum, 3 16 inch wide universal heads that are half inch deep and same thing but three-eighths of an inch deep or long and then the other major tool that's going to be needed is the air impact hammer and now you don't use just your standard flathead punch bit or what have you this actually is a bit that's concaved in the end and they do come in different sizes and this one is made for this universal head here which i believe is about five sixteenths of an inch in diameter. So we're gonna go ahead and get these tools ready, get the camera set up, and you can watch the process. Okay, so we have a few fasteners we need to remove first before we can take the bumper off. There are two on this side and two on this side, and then there's also one that fastens the front portion of the bumper to the footboard on both sides. And these bottom two screws, at least on my sled, are T25 Torx bit. All right, the bumper just slips off like that. Fairly easy. So we'll go ahead and set that underneath, along with the bolts. Now the next step is going to be to flatten this portion of the tunnel out and match up the tunnel roll so we can slip the tunnel roll over and get those rivets lined up. Those were just a couple screws I had holding it on. Okay, now that we have the tunnel roll off, I'm gonna go ahead and drill out this rivet here. Oh, I guess I don't even have to do that. So now that we have the tunnel roll off, I'm gonna go ahead and flatten out this portion of the tunnel. That way, the end of the tunnel footboard here can slip into this slot before I rivet it in. That way the rivet holes will line up on both pieces. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and use that sleeve. It's just a big chunk of, this is a quarter inch steel. It's nice and flat. I'm gonna go ahead and use that to flatten out this end piece right here. That's looking pretty good. Get this one last spot. I think that'll just about do it. So, as you can see, this tunnel roll has a little bit of a gap right here. And that's where the, the end of the tunnel slips in itself. That looks pretty good. I might have to drill some holes just to line them up a little better. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and hit this rib up first, this end. And the thin pores, the thin pieces, I'll go ahead and use the, the 3 8 inch rivet. And then the thicker, Portions right by the support there, I'll use the half inch rivets. Okay, this is gonna get pretty loud, so I'm gonna go ahead and give me some ear protection and some eye protection. All right, so this top portion isn't lined up completely, so I'm gonna get a drill bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this hole over a little.
All right, so the next step, now that I got pretty much both ends attached, I'm gonna go ahead and rivet all the holes that line up perfectly because this is exactly where I want this to sit. And then once I get those lined up and riveted, then I'll be able to set the bore on the rest of them. And then they'll just go ahead and pinch it right into place. And there won't be any alignment issues. All right, so I got almost all, except for one, of the support bracket rivets in. You can see there's a slight misalignment, but I kind of had to go with the average with the holes. So not to worry, a little bit of a drill bit clean out, and we'll be back in action. So like I said, I used the half inch rivets here here and here I got one more to do and then I'll probably put one up here and then the rest of those will be the 3 8 so I'll go ahead and show you what the bottom side looks like so that's basically all it does is it just mushrooms the rivet to where it holds in and doesn't loosen up they are aluminum I could have went with stainless steel, but uh, this is pretty much what they had available at the moment and I needed to get this done. So I don't see any reason why it wouldn't hold up. If I do see any issues with them loosening up in the future, I might just drill them out and use the stainless steel next time. So it's a learning curve. This is my first time doing this for a sled. I actually worked at a truck stop a long time ago and uh, there were some trailers that we repaired and we had to put some new we had to put new panels on the side of the trailer and yeah we spent a couple days putting new panels on this way
more vibration on the hand. That's why it's better if you have a bigger, bulkier piece of metal. That's it. So, uh, hope this helps you guys out. Last thing to do is to put the bumper back on, and then we wait for the mud flap, the snow flap. Guys, that's it. Turned out pretty good. All right, guys, that's it. Another job successfully completed. So, you know, don't be intimidated. Do like I do. I look at this kind of stuff and I think to myself, huh, just gonna fix it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the alert bell so you're notified of future updates of this series and more. And uh, you know, drop in, say hi. If you got any questions, let me know. I'm more than happy to answer the questions. And if I don't have the answer, I'll try and find the answer for you. And if you guys know anybody else that likes this kind of stuff, please feel free to share in social networking with your family and friends. All right, thanks a lot guys. See you in the next video. Come on back and God bless. <laughs>